Hey everybody, this is Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Dustoff, and this is The Score, the official podcast of the sport of team roping. This is the Team Roping Journal's semi-weekly podcast, highlighting the team roping industry's top talents and influencers through stories that inspire and connect ropers. We sit down with ropers from the professional ranks, as well as industry icons and producers to delve into topics that make the team roping world tick. This is season two. It will feature even deeper interviews, storytelling, and issue-based coverage, and we are so excited you're here. Oh my goodness, everybody. I feel like this is just the 4th of July round all over again. Welcome to the short score. We have so dang much to tell you. So exciting. So exciting. So exciting. Caitlin's put together a pretty good wrap-up, of course. So you guys will remember that this, the short score during the summer, it has information on the Resistile Rookie results. We bring you the Pro Rodeo results, everything that you need to know, kind of your cheat sheet of Pro Rodeo. That's brought to you by CSI Saddle Pads. And the Circuit Standings update is brought to you by Fastback Ropes. So these groups uh, or these companies support us all year long. They want their messaging pushed out next to great content about the sport of team roping. So I want to make sure that you guys are thanking them and are and well aware of who is bringing you the news that you need when you're in the practice pen. Just talking to your buddies, you can chit-chat and be the one that's in the know. So... Without further ado, Caitlin, would you please tell us what's going on in Pro Rodeo? That Brooks DeHosey. Mm-hmm. We've said it a few times. We're fans of Brooks DeHosey. Yep. He and Walt Woodard just won the California Rodeo Salinas. Uh, they were 50.3 seconds on five head. That's awesome. That paid $7,000. Listen, I've got a story getting ready to go up about that, and that story is going to have some horse updates that are brought to you by mm-hmm. Soft Ride. Equine Comfort Boots, because Soft Ride's t- sponsoring our content of great horses all mm-hmm. year long. And so I saw, I talked to Brooks. He is riding a mare that to win Salinas, which we love when mares do well. It's mm-hmm. also one of our favorite girl power situations as far as the mares go. Mm-hmm. Kay- Caitlin's shrugging. She doesn't, I, I she doesn't am gelding. So she, she's a gelding person. I am a gelding person. <laughs> you, you would be. But Brooks' mare, um, her name is Little Mac Duel. She's just eight this year. And she's a granddaughter of Dual Pep. Special Dual Pep is her sire. Um, and that is out of a mare named Little Mac Robber by Night Robber. Um, looks like there's Freckles Playboy way back on that mare. That's so, sweet. That mare is sweet. Yeah. Brooke said he, he had sold her already this year and oh. bought her back right before him and Walt started roping. I got so much out of talking to Brooks yesterday and Walt <laughs> this morning. I thought that was really cool. And then uh, Walt also, he's riding his horse, Blueberry, who we're going to have a podcast with Walt coming up um, in August. So mm-hmm. you guys have something to look forward to. And he'll tell you the whole training process that oh, went nice. into Blueberry. And I was surprised to find out that Blueberry is a Sunfrost bred horse, frosted PC Frenchman by a stud named Frosted Sunman out of a mare, Dakota's Lady Poco. Poco Jr. goes back to Poco Jr. Roan, uh, a Hancock mare, uh, Mr. Baron Red mare, or excuse me, a Mr. Baron Red stud. So there's some cool names on that horse's papers. That's a horse out of South Dakota that Walt and his son um, Travis made. Mm-hmm. So I look forward to that story on on the website. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That is sweet. Yeah, and... Super cool, I did the math. It's been 12 years since Walt won Rodeo Salinas with Clay Tryon. I thought that was a fun fact. That is a fun fact. Yeah. Walt didn't remember who he won um, Salinas with before. So Clay Tryon. He actually said he missed for Clay Tryon to win Salinas, so I bet he will be excited to know that, in fact, he did win it with Clay Tryon once upon a time. Yeah. He couldn't remember. Yeah, definitely <laughs> Clay Tryon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Him and Brooks, they placed 8th in the second round with a 9.4 second round, and then they won the final round with an 8 flat. So They got a goodie there in the short round. Yeah, they really did. Uh, moving on, uh, Nelson Wyatt and Levi Lord. Uh, currently in progress is Spanish Fork, Fiesta Days Rodeo in Utah. Um, they're so far winning the first round with a 4.1 second round. Their fourth in the second round with a 4.5 second run, and their first in the average with a time of 8.6 seconds on two head. So we'll wait and see how that all pans out. Nelson Wyatt is a former Resistol Rookie of the Year. Yes, <laughs> he is a Resistol Header. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then at the Snake River Stampede in Nampa, Idaho, they won the average there with a 15.1 on three head, and that paid over $5,000 a man. Nelson Wyatt and Levi Lord did? Yeah. Talk about being on a heater. Right? Yeah. Especially yeah. in the averages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right now, or they tied Cal Fuller, who's a resistal rookie contender this year, mm-hmm. and Casper Roy. They tied for third with a 4.5 second run that paid over $2,000. And then in the final round, they tied Dylan Holyfield and Phoenix Everano and Clay Tryon and Travis Graves for first with a 5.2 second round. And that Dylan Holyfield is also in their resistal rookie race this year. So oh, cool. It's cool to see some resistal rookies yeah, placing all around. In. I think that Walt and I talked about that today. The 65 rodeos instead of 75 rodeos mm-hmm. are going to maybe let, the theory is that they're going to let a lot of younger guys that maybe don't have as much money to do battle over 75 mm-hmm. rodeos have a little bit better of a chance. So that would be sweet. Yeah, I don't... I don't I do not stand here to get into that debate of 65 <laughs> or 75 or unlimited rodeos, but that was just a thought that Walt had, that that's going to help a lot of the younger guys who might just have a two-horse trailer mm-hmm. and a pickup. So Yeah, just kind of getting out there. That'll mm-hmm. be sweet. Um, and then moving on, the pro rodeo results, standings. Uh, Blake Hughes and Braden Harmon, they won the Kansas's largest night rodeo in prayer. Pretty Prairie, Kansas, mm-hmm. with a 5.9 second round that paid a little over $1,000. And then Lane Galbell and Lucas Falconer, uh, they won Wapello Pro Rodeo in Iowa with a 7 flat, and that paid over $1,000. Awesome. And then obviously Cheyenne's going on right mm-hmm. now. So. Um, so, yeah, this year it's a little different. Cheyenne, the top 40 teams from the two head qualifier mm-hmm. are making it back. We've seen a couple rounds go so far, or one set of guys make it. So, you can look forward to next week having a, a more thorough update on what's going on at Cheyenne and who won because mm-hmm. uh, the short round is Sunday. So exciting. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Um, and then moving on. We have the Resisto Rookie results, obviously. Do we have to talk about Peyton Bray again? Yeah, Peyton Bray every every, every week. week. <laughs> Just kidding, Peyton. I love talking about you. I'm glad you're doing so well. <laughs> he uh, and obviously Eric Rogers at the California Rodeo Salinas, they tied Chad Masters and Joseph Harrison for third in the second round with the 8.8 second run. That paid over $1,000. And then... They won third in the third round with an 8.7 second run, paying almost $2,000. So definitely helping him in the standings. Yeah, Peyton Bray, I've got to circle back to that. He's roping with Eric Rogers. Eric Rogers has made the finals every year since he started rodeo, or since he made it the first time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a story later, um, maybe next week, about all the guys who have not missed the finals since their first finals. Eric Rogers is, of course, on that list. So, um... Peyton, we're liking your chances. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Super awesome. Uh, another resistor rookie contender, we talked about him earlier, is that Cal Fuller, who's mm-hmm. ripping with Casper Roy. Um, they, obviously, like we said, they tied Nelson Wyatt and Levi Lord for third in that second round at Nampa, Idaho, with that 4.5 second round. So, 2000 that's not going to hurt your earnings. Mm-hmm. More standings updates, that Garrett Chick from Texas with Roping with Ross Ashford, who is a former Resisto Rookie champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, currently in progress at Ogden Pioneer Days in Utah. They're winning third in the average with a 10.3 seconds on two head. And they want, are winning the first or, or the second round with a 4.4 second round. Um, also still in progress at the Spanish Fork, Utah. They're fourth in the first round at the 4.8 second round. So their chances are looking pretty good. Things are getting very quick right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, we also talked about him earlier, Dylan Holyfield, roping with Phoenix. Um, they obviously tied Nelson White and Levi Lord and Clay Trine and Travis Graves for first in that final round with a 5.2 in Nampa, Idaho. And they also placed fifth in the average with a time of 16.4 seconds on three head. And that paid $2,562 a man. Another more, lots and lots of resistal updates today. Uh, That's great. Young guys are putting in a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, Wyatt Hansen is healing for Ryan Reed. They uh, tied J.B. James Jr. and Brock Hansen for sixth in the fourth round at um, Salinas, California with a 9.2 second run. That paid over $600 a man. Uh, Jaron Johnson, he's healing for Cody, too. 
Um, currently, obviously, like we said, Cheyenne's going on right now. They qualified for the perfs um, in the quarterfinals. They were in the third performance. They were second with a 10.1 second run, and that paid $1,674 a man. Um, this obviously comes out today, Tuesday, July 23rd. I Yes, Tuesday, July 23rd. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, good thing I'm right. I don't have my watch. It's dead today. <laughs> um, they're up today. They're on their second one today, so we'll find out tonight or later this mm -hmm. afternoon if they're going to make it back to the short go. Drew Carnes is healing for Ty Berger. Um, they, at the Lake Lazerne, the Painted Pony. At the Painted Pony. Yeah, that was, I think it's a series over there, so they won first at the first one at the 4.6 second run, and then again at the Painted Pony, they won first again with a 5.2 second run. You guys, if you go on a trip to the East Coast, or if you are on the East Coast listening to this and you've never been to Lake Lazerne, New York, it's absolutely beautiful. It's an awesome vacation spot. This is my pitch to the Painted Pony. Oh my God. You should go watch a rodeo. <laughs> go enter a rodeo at the Painted Pony. It's a narrow little pen and is a really cool atmosphere. So try it. There's your commercial Painted Pony. Fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, for the Resist Our Rookie update, Dylan Alstrom. Uh, he's up with Taylor Wynn. And same thing, Cheyenne's still going on. So in the corner finals. In the second performance, they were first with a 7.7 second run, and that paid $2,233 a man. That's doing it at Cheyenne. Yeah. 7.7? Seven, seven? Heck yeah. I think fastest in the the slack was 7.2 mm -hmm. with that Tanner Green. Yeah. yeah. And that was doing it. That was mm -hmm. really doing it. So anything 7 second range is yeah. doing it. Um, and then moving on, we got our fastback circuit standings update. Um, in the first frontier circuit, we talked about them earlier. Ty Barger and Drew Carnes, all of their Lake Lazerne, the Painted Pony earnings, uh, moved Ty to second with $4,537, and Drew is third with $2,804. Um, in the Badland circuit, we have John Peterson and Trey Smith. They won first in Mitchell, South Dakota with a 4.9 second run, and that paid over $2,000 a man. John is currently first with over $8,000, and Trey is second in the standings with over $7,000. Um, more Badland circuit is uh, Cash Hetzel. Cade Smith is open with heading for him. He's not in that circuit standings. Um, but again, at Mitchell, South Dakota, they tied Curry Kirchner and Daniel Reed for third with a six flat. Um, that paid almost $2,000. And then at Crete, Nebraska, they play second with a 6.5 second run. Um, Cash, he's currently first with $7,698 in the Badlands circuit. Um, California circuit, that Nano Garza. Who is 15th in the PRCA World yeah. Standings right now. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Him, he's repping with Tanner Baldwin, who I believe is Turquoise Circuit. Um, they at um, Salinas, California. In the third round, they tied Chad Masters and Joseph Harrison for fourth with a nine-second run. And they placed fifth in the final round with a 10.2-second run. And fourth in the average with a time of 57.2 seconds on five head, and that paid over $4,000. Um, like I said, Nano, he's currently first in the California standings with $23,701. Holy circuit standings. Right? Yeah. Not bad at all. All right. In the Maple Leaf circuit, Dawson and Dylan Graham and Morris Manitoba, they were five flat. They won about $1,700. And then in Kennedy, Saskatchewan, they tied Grady Quam and Colton Fletcher for first with a 5.3 second run worth about $1,000. So they're currently six in those Canadian standings. So we're going to kind of be watching the Canadian standings a little bit more as the CFR approaches. I know there are some guys like Justin Bird is going home mm -hmm. to Montana this year. Um, he's going to kind of head off the PRCA rodeo trail or the pro rodeo trail in a big way um, and go to Canada and try to make those Canadian finals. Um, they're pretty good nowadays. They pay mm -hmm. equal money in the team rope, and I think. So it'll be cool to see the Canadian finals kind of unfold as the year goes on. Um, in Montana, which BT dubs, that's like I said, Dustin's also trying <laughs> to um, go home, which is Montana too. So Derek and Brett Fleming, they won 
Danford, Montana. They were first with a 6.4 second run worth about $950. And Derek is first in the Montana circuit standings, and Brett is second, and they both have about 5600 won. Again, I'm looking at Caitlin's notes, so I didn't actually know that Dustin Bird was coming <laughs> up here, so I didn't mean to double talk about Dustin. Um, but he and Riley Wilson were in Shelby, Montana. They tied Jade Gardner and Ty Hendrick with a 6.8 second run worth $841 a man. Bird has $4,486 won, so he's fourth. Jade is 17th with $840, that same $840 he won in Shelby, Montana. So there is your update for the circuit standings. That's, again, brought to you by Fastback Ropes. Fastback has a ton of guys in the circuit system, and that's because, you know, these guys that are salt of the earth that are that are out there just kind of hammering away. They're, use, they're, they're working for a living. They're roping on the weekends. They're using fastback ropes. So thank you, Fastback, for bringing us those standings. And everybody, that is a wrap on this week's episode of The Short Score. We will have a fun episode with none other than Clay Tryon this Thursday, um, the three-time world champion. We'll, we're going to chat with him, actually, this afternoon. So warning, uh, a whole episode with Clay Tryon is going to be something interesting. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Um, and then we will have all kinds of stuff next week with Cheyenne getting ready to be over. So mm-hmm. we'll talk to y'all soon. Have a great one.